I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. <laughs> Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> My wife just... <laughs> told me today's National Popcorn Day. <laughs> Only the Holy Spirit knows these things. Man, I need a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. <laughs> Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? My wife just told me today's National Popcorn Day. Only the Holy Spirit knows these things. Man, I need a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. <laughs> Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? My wife just told me today's National Popcorn Day. Only the Holy Spirit knows these things. Man, I need a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. <laughs> Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? My wife just told me today's National Popcorn Day. Only the Holy Spirit knows these things. Man, I need a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. <laughs> Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? My wife just told me today's National Popcorn Day. Only the Holy Spirit knows these things. Man, I need a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? My wife just told me today's National Popcorn Day. Only the Holy Spirit knows these things. Man, I need a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. <laughs> Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? My wife just told me today's National Popcorn Day. Only the Holy Spirit knows these things. Man, I need a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. <laughs> Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? My wife just told me today's National Popcorn Day. Only the Holy Spirit knows these things. Man, I need a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? My wife just told me today's National Popcorn Day. Only the Holy Spirit knows these things. Man, I need a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. <laughs> Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are 
Are you serious? My wife just told me today's National Popcorn Day. <laughs> Only the Holy Spirit knows these things. Man, I need a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what eternal popcorn tastes like. <laughs> Everybody's keto up there, you know that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> My wife just... <laughs> My heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. These are those who are dead. Now, I mean dead spiritually. Now, I've met many people who said they were spiritual, but they're dead. Because their connection is an ungodly spiritual arena. It says here, this is what's going to... This is the transgression of the wicked. He says, there is no fear of God before his eyes. None. No fear of God. The wicked are dead, and there is no fear of God. There is no reverence of him in, in decision-making. So I want, I, make sure you get this down. Reverence, honor, and respect. Reverence is associated with decision-making. There's no reverence in him. Honor is associated with submission to his ways. Again, reverence is uh, reverencing him in decision-making. Honor is submission to his ways, and respect is giving him the glory and the praise of everything he does for you. That's honor, that's reverence, honor, and respect, which the world does not give to God. In fact, there are some believers who don't give that to God. That's why they're really not believers. All right, let's go a little further. Let's start at verse 1 again. Is everybody okay? An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked, there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes when he finds out his iniquity and when he hates. When he, uh, the words of his mouth are what? Wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. Oh. And you know, a lot of people have ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good, and he does not abhor evil. Abhor evil needs hate evil. You and I are to hate evil. We don't hate people, we just hate evil. Amen. Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are great deep. O oh Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O oh God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. And what river is that? It's called the river of life. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. For the workers of iniquity have fallen and they have been cast down and are not able to rise. Again, the wicked are like the dead. <laughs> there is no fear of God. No reverence, no honor, and no respect. Now, this is how we know the difference between those who know the Lord and don't know the Lord. You know, you're going to get many people that say, I know the Lord. But you can tell by their fruits there's no reverence, honor, and respect. There's no fear of God in their life. Amen. One of the things, if they ain't got control over their mouth, you know there's no reverence, there's no fear of God. Because they just shoot whatever they want. There's no consideration of who's in front of them. Because he's not even though he is. The word says that we're to put Christ in front of us. If everybody would put Christ in front of them all the time, we wouldn't do the things we did. Amen. We'd know he's watching. Amen? There's a recording of everything you and I have done here. There's not a recording of sin if it's under the blood. 
As long as you've repented, it's wiped away. Thank God. <laughs> We'd all be in trouble. Philippians 2. But again, if you're still justifying what you did, it takes you longer to repent. That means you will reap more. Philippians chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> In verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation taking a form of bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Well, you know, the wicked always wants to have a reputation. Amen. They want to flaunt it. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient. Obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, there are many who confess Jesus, but really he's not their Lord. He's their Savior, and there's a difference. Verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear, which is what? Reverence, honor, and respect. So that reverence is acknowledging him in your decisions. Amen? That area of honor, submission to his ways, and that respect is giving him the glory of everything he's done in praise. And, of course, trembling. Know that he can wipe you out in a second. And fear is one decision away. And so is hell. You can step into fear. It's a wrong fear. It's a tormenting fear. It's, it's horror fear. Which is in hell. You know, think about that. You're going to either fear him here or fear him there. Fear isn't going to leave. So it's our responsibility to work out our own salvation. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So, he's working in me and you to do these things. He's already given us the strength to submit, to say yes, to say no. He says, do all things without what? Complaining. And disputing that you may become what? Blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a what? Crooked and perverse generation, which is known as the wicked, among whom you shine as lights in the world. So he's saying, don't act like them or you won't shine. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Again, Many people say that uh, it says that everyone, uh, everyone will confess that Jesus is Lord, but they're really, he's not really Lord over their life. Work out your own salvation. Fear and trembling with reverence, honor, and respect. Again, this is a reference to the wicked in the area to where they don't do these things. But the righteous is to do this. I, I, again, if you really look at everyone that you know as a believer, and I'm not saying going around judging them and first judge yourself whether you're walking in the fear of God or not. But if you're not walking in the fear of God, how can you tell someone else's? Remember, you can only give what you got. And if you ain't got it, you can't give it. Revelation 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. It's 
Somebody there? Amen. And I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on an island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, he was arrested and brought there. This was not a voluntary swim to this island, I want you to know. And I was in the spirit in the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as a what? Trumpet. trumpet. So the trumpet of God speaks. It's always utilized with God getting ready to release a word. Does everybody understand that? And I was in the spirit in the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice, like a what? As of a trumpet. Saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and what you see, write on the book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, Ephesus, Samaria, Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardius, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about with the chest of a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool and as white as snow. And his eyes like flames of fire. It don't look like Jesus anymore, does it? His feet were like fine brass as it, re it was re refined in the furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth when a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after this. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Seven meaning complete always. So we see it was a voice, a sound of a trumpet, which is associated again with warning, gathering, announcing, battle, arrival of the king or a king. So everybody get it? Seven meaning complete and perfect in this trump, in this trumpet that is happening. We are in a season of the trumpet. In fact, we are in the arena to where we are called the Feast of Trumpets. Amen? Amen. So if we are in the time of the Feast of the Trumpets, go to Leviticus 23. See, God aligns things up so cool. Leviticus 23. The word talks about two witnesses. The word also says when two touch and agree comes to pass, right? Now there are seven feasts of the Lord, meaning complete and perfect. The first feast is Passover. The second feast is unleavened. The third feast is first fruits. The fourth feast is Pentecost. The fifth feast is trumpets. The sixth feast is, feast is atonement, and the seventh feast is tabernacles. We are waiting for the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets, and in this we know that the church will be removed in this feast. So in between this time right now, the, the trumpet is still blowing in the area where God is speaking and warning and, and gathering and announcing. Does everybody understand that? In verse 1, and the Lord said to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feasts of the Lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocation. These are my feasts. These were not the feasts of Israel. They were not the feasts of the Jews. They are not the feasts of mankind. These were the Lord's feasts. 
Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work on it. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in your dwellings. There are the fee these are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. On the fourteenth day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. That's the first feast. And on the 15th day of the same month, it is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread and so forth. And it goes on and explains all the feasts in order. It's, again, it's Passover, unleavened, first fruits, Pentecost, atonement, and tabernacles. Do I need to repeat them? Cool. Again, we are in the season of the trumpet right now. Amen? And because of this, we know that the body of Christ will eventually be removed. And we talked about the th uh, three whirlwinds. The removal of the body of Christ. Everything right now is leading to this event with warning, announces, battling, gathering, the coming of the king, and a king that God has placed. That king is Donald Trump. Our history always repeats itself. Just like King Cyrus. Many believers are ignorant of the feasts and the timing of God. Remember, God's time is God's will. Anything out of God's time is not God's will. Amen. That's why the enemy loves to come with anxiousness. Amen. To push people out of God's time. So they become anxious, they become fearful in the wrong area. It's not the fear of the Lord, it's fear. That's why the word says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, prayer and supplication, right? In 2 Chronicles 36. Second Chronicles 36. Do you realize how many people would mock as soon as I said that Trump is the king? Because they have no spiritual understanding at all. And they are dead. Why? Because they promote what God disapproves of. So, uh, Second, Chron Second Chronicles 36 verse 15. Somebody there? Is everybody okay? Yeah. Okie dokie. And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them. These are announcements, aren't they? These are warnings, aren't they? Because he had com compassion on his people and, and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messenger of God. I want you to know that Trump is a messenger of God. Yes. Not because he's perfect, <laughs> because he's not. Not anything. God just chose him. He can put his hand on anyone. Amen? Amen? And turn their hearts around. Amen. But they mocked the messenger of God because they had no spiritual understanding or discernment. Des and despised his words, scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no re remedy. <laughs> Why? God always sends chaos or allows chaos to happen. Therefore he brought against them the king of the Chaldeans who killed their young men with the swords in the house of their sanctuaries and had no compassion on young men or virgin on the edge of the, uh, a or the age of the week. He gave them all into his hand. And all the articles from the house of God, great and small, the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king and his leaders, all these he took to Babylon. 
Then they burned the house of God, broke down the wall of Jerusalem, burned all of its palaces with fire, and destroyed all its precious possessions. And those who escaped from the sword he carried away to Babylon, where they became servants to him and his sons until the rule of the kingdom of Persia. And the king of Persia was called Cyrus. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years, meaning what? Complete. So they were in captivity 70 years under Babylon until King Cyrus from Persia came and conquered. I want you to know that we are in captivity for many years in this country. All the way back to President uh, Kennedy, who tried to rescue the people out, and they assassinated him. But for the last eight years prior to Trump, it was the time of darkness here. It was a tremendous time of darkness. All the ports were opened up. Obama opened up ports to invite darkness in every area because he's not a servant of the Lord. In fact, he took Christmas away. He took all kinds of things away. But it's amazing that believers didn't get this. So-called Christians still voted for that moron and put him in a second term. It blew me away. He's a heathen and a servant of darkness. I, hope, pray, I pray that God rescues his soul. Before he cooks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Again, seventy meaning complete and perfect. And Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. And all these other guys that even call themselves reverends. They call themselves reverends and, and they're heathens. And then they promote the things that God disapprove of. And these guys are in trouble. They carry no fear of the Lord. Does everybody understand that? That's where you'll know there is no fear. No fear of God. They just lie like it's candy. They lie like it's a popsicle. Lying to them tastes good. Isaiah. Did I say to go to Isaiah? I meant it. <laughs> Isaiah 45. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse 1. Are you ready? Thus is the Lord to his anointed. How many of y'all know God anointed Trump? Again, he couldn't do what he's doing right now in his own strength. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of kings, to open before him double doors so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you, says the Lord. I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness. How's he going to do that? Well, he put the executive order in, right? All those involved in child smuggling, pedophile, and all human acts. What's he going to do? He's taking all their property, all their stock, and all their possessions. They were going to lose it all. And the hidden secret places, the hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel, for, my, for Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel my elect. So God put Trump in to support Israel, the Jewish people, in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen? Amen? For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me. Did Trump ever really know the Lord? No, not till now. 
Remember, it was prophesied that before he would get an office, he might whisper his name, but after he got an office, he would shout his name. He's not afraid to say Jesus anymore. He's not afraid to call this country under God again. He's restoring everything. That they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Wow. Rain down, you heavens from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. This is associated with the second wind. Let the earth open. Let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Again, Trump is his anointed to turn the course of evil and turn us away from evil so that righteousness and justice shall reign. The Lord will give plenty of opportunity for rescue before <laughs> so that people's hearts can change. Amen? Listen, 2019, which we are in right now, we have entered the year of justice and righteousness also. It's also a representation of God's throne. It is the throne of God because in the at God's throne, it says righteousness and justice. So we know that it's associated with the year of God's throne. So in that, it means his presence is coming. His presence is going to increase. His glory will be released in multiple places. Revival will be breaking out in places. In Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, verse 25. Hebrews 12, verse 25. Is everybody there? So because we are in this time span now, God is releasing. Now that, now that there's the two, in other words, okay, so we're waiting for the Feast of the Trumpets, right? So we're in that season where the Feast of the Trumpets must be fulfilled. So we're heading to that fulfillment. Now God has a king in office. He's anointed called Trump. Those two now, you will be hearing more and more about the Lord, there'll be more things being released. There will be more sounds from heaven. There'll be more signs in the heaven. There'll be more signs and wonders. In verse 25, see that you do not what? Refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth? But now he is promising, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this, yes, once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with what? Reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. And again, God will shake your personal world and your private world. He will shake it until you trust, rest, and wait in Him, until you remove all the impurities until you no longer fall into anxiousness and fear. Amen? He's going to expose and remove all of these areas of deception and immaturity. Because he wants his children to grow up! God is going to allow the return of chaos. 
Because out of these things come revival. People's hearts turn to him when they're in chaos. Hello. Now, there's all personal chaos. Amen. Those we call trials and tribulations. Those are personal chaoses. Then there's global chaoses. Listen, 2019, today, the 20th day of January, there will be a full-blown blood moon eclipse. It's a sign, isn't it? Okay, we've, we're headed towards the Feast of Trumpets. We've, got all, we've already gone through a tetra. All kinds of things are happening. Trump the, uh, was a predestined messenger of God, was born... On Friday the 14th of June, 1946, on a blood moon. Is there a coincidence? No, God has specific timing, doesn't he? Amen? 700 days, seven meaning complete and perfect. 700 days later, Israel became a nation. Was that a coincidence? No. Now, President Trump became president. Uh, he was seven years old and seven months and seven days in 2016. Is that a coincidence? 777? Jackpot, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Some things just don't change. So <laughs> <laughs> Come on, hon, sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is the first sitting president ever to visit the wall in Jerusalem. Think about this. Is that a coincidence? No. Let's talk about some of the things that God has used him to accomplish. In 2017, in January, he blocked the foreign aid to abortions in other countries. Blocked it, said no more financing to you. On the 31st of January, he nominated a conservative uh, judge. Amen. And the 7th of February, he rescued and restored and saved $700 million of cost in an F-35 fighters. That's what he did. He negotiated it. I mean, I can go on and on all kinds of stuff, but I'm going to share a couple of things. <clears throat> on the 7th of April in 2016, or 17, yeah. He rolled back more regulations for businesses. On the 22nd, he revoked transgender toilets in public schools. I mean, think about some of these things, and people don't, and believers, many, I mean, he's not a Christian whether they're stinking blind. He rolled back so much regulations for businesses. And to, in 2017, on the 1st of June, he withdrew the Paris Climate Accord, which costs us billions of dollars, and it's nothing but green religion. Yeah. On the 26th, he donated his salary to the Department of Education. No sitting president donated their salary to anything, except for their own pocket. On the 5th of September in 2017, he revoked DACA because DACA was an organization associated with child smuggling. And he wanted to stop it. He wanted to stop human trafficking. On the 24th of September, sanctions of North Korea started. On the 21st of October, he defeated ISIS. On the 24th of October, he released, now check this out, 77 acres of land he released that Obama had bound up, nobody can touch. He went in there and released 77 million acres of land 
in the Gulf of Mexico for drilling oil. And we are now the leading oil producing country in the world. On the 26th of October, the IRS was made accountable for attacking conservative um, groups through the IRS. He snagged them. And the 9th of November, he negotiated a $250 billion trade deal with China. On the 14th, uh, he, he um, put in a, uh, uh, oh, he had a recording of the most federal judges he put in office. See, there are more judges that you don't even see what's up. There's 130-something of them he put in place. In fact, he's the only president that put so many judges in place. On the 19th of December, he signed into law the largest tax cut since Reagan. Uh, oh, and then, if you recall, in the 22nd, he removed the Obama lying care. No more penalties. Does everybody get it? The Obama lying care. Yes. Did you know that before, and when Obama was president, before they wouldn't go Obama, ISIS, and that, he'd send out leaflets, flyers, we're coming? He should have sent them a lunch, too. They use the excuse of protecting children, but that was nothing. Why? Because he's not a U.S. individual. He's against his country, not with this country. And if people can't see that, so be it. I won't go any further than that. On the 25th of December, Christmas was brought back into the White House, where Jesus Christ was honored, and all the uh, prayer rugs were removed. Hello? Hello? In 2018, this is what's going on. January, he eliminated 22 regulations for every new regulation. So there's a trade-off. On the 18th of January, he created the Conservative and Religious Freedom Division of Office for Civil Rights that was against Christian and conservative beliefs. So he set up an office to civil rights to combat that. So if anything goes wrong, you can go to civil court and sue people. Hallelujah. On the 6th of April, 2.9 million jobs were added. And the 9th of May, secured release, or oh, he released the three Americans from uh, North Korea. And, um, oh, on the 14th of May, we set up the, he opened the embassy in Jerusalem. On the 21st of May, he rescued, rescued us from Obama's dealings with um, Cuba. Besides pulling us out of the Iranian deal. Amen. All kinds of stuff. The travel ban was upheld by the Supreme Court that the other circuit courts tried to shut it down. He, then he put in uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Jobless uh, rate came down the lowest since 1969. And now we hear our today is the blood full moon. Tonight. Which marks halfway of Trump's first term. Think about this. Is this coincidence? No. No. The second wind of revival is here. In fact, I gotta tell you something. After the, the word was given and so forth, I saw this testimony. Actually, it was on Sid Roth. And there was this uh, king of Africa but he's a servant of the Lord. And uh, he's a businessman, and he was out traveling, and he was exhausted, and he was on a fast. And so he went to his hotel room, and in his exhaustion, he took off like half of his clothes and fell on the bed and said, man, I, Lord, I need strength. And next thing he knows, he was getting ready to fall asleep, and a knock was on the door. And he sat up, and he realized that the knock came again, but it wasn't on the door. And when he looked over to the other side, it was doors that were open and two angelic beings were standing there. Neither one of their feet were on the floor. They were floating, standing there. And they began to speak to him, but his mouth, their mouths were not moving. 
Then he heard from a distance the voice of the Lord saying to the angels, is he there? And as soon as they said yes, he was in front of the Lord. He said he couldn't look at him, but was too brilliant and glorious. And the Lord said to him, now this was my blessing. I'm sending the wind. I'm sending, in other words, it's the second wind I'm sending. And I'm going to pour out provision. I'm going to pour out my glory. And I'm going to let the whole world know I'm giving them an opportunity. The whole world to know the truth. And I'm going to invade places. All things are about to change. Just according to the word of 2019. That they may know the truth. So we can expect a big revival to begin to break out. We're in it. We're in the second wind. Is that powerful? 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. And verse 1. But know this, in the last days perilous signs will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, Brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but deny its power, and from such people turn away. These are the individuals that are on another doctrine. They're on a doctrine of good and evil, not righteousness and justice. Does everybody get it? And we see this is associated with a form of ungodliness and evilness for this sort of those who creep into households and make uh, captives of gullible men and women loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts, always learned and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jabez resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. Are, there, are they, Is the wicked resisting the truth? Yes. Look how many people are resisting. Look, at, they're resisting the truth that God's anointed is in office. Think about that. They're resisting that it, God has laid his hand on this president. They're resisting that. And they're calling themselves believers. No way. They are lost. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. Why? They're living on the doctrines of demons, on the good and evil, not the justice and righteousness. They live out of the eyes of deception with false perception. Oh, hallelujah. But they will progress no further, for the follower will be manifested to all as there also was. So you and I are able to see, see this all. They can't see it, but as the world begins to eyes open, they'll be able to see it more and more and more. Other countries are seeing it. Other nations are seeing it. There's an awakening all over the place. They're seeing the corruption in their government. And see, they can't hide it anymore unless, there's, unless the Internet is shut off completely. They might not be able to put it on TV and whatever, but they can put it on their cell phones. I don't know if Obama supplied all the world with a cell phone, but I know he did the current U.S. He was doing anything for, for a vote. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Hallelujah. It's time believers stopped acting human. We're not human. We're eternal. Amen? Man, we belong to a kingdom, an eternal kingdom. Verse 18. 
Little children, is the last hour you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come in all kinds of forms. They come in suits, skirts, and jeans. <laughs> By which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of, of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. In other words, you should be able to see and understand these areas of what's going on. God's time. God's, you know, one of the things I really believe is going to be shaken in people's lives is their plans. <laughs> their plans. Uh, people got all these plans and agendas laid out. See, they got plans, they got beliefs that have plans, they got desires that have plans, and they got emotions that have plans. But they didn't check with God. Amen. <laughs> What's his plan? See, but they want to line up their emotions, their desires, and their will with God's plan, but it ain't going to line up until he takes it over. It's got to be all submitted to him for it to be established. Or you'll find that your plans will crumble. I think that's going to be the hardening and the shaking right now. There'll be many people that'll fall because they're not getting their way. Amen. Baby Huey syndrome. <laughs> Romans 2. Romans 2. In verse 1. Oh, happy days. There is no other president in the world that has done as much as this man's done in two years. None. And, and not only just getting that done, but he hasn't done as much righteousness as this man has done. You got to remember now, you got an Obamanite that took eight years and all the media and all the Democratic Party and all the rhinos and the, and the, other, and the Republican Party that were promoters because they were getting paid off. Look at how many politicians, they don't get so much of a salary and they're worth millions today. How do you think they got it? And it wasn't going to a poker game. Hallelujah. Romans 2, verse 1. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, O woman, whoever you are, who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge, practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man or woman, who you judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Wow. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to what? Repentance to turn away. But in accordance to your hardness and your impenitent, impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath and the day of wrath, revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Listen, you want to make sure you're on the right side when this day comes. You're going to be going, thank God that ain't me. Or you're going to go, oh dear God, that's me. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance and doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, and every soul of a man who does evil, of the Jew first and also the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is what? No partiality with daddy. And I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians, I believe it's 15.
the trumpet of God. Or we might say the trump of God. Verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you, so wait a minute, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. So individuals that are involved in corruption are not going to inherit incorruption. Amen? That means they ain't going home. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all what? Sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the what? Last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast. That means consistent. Be what? Immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, we got a blood moon tonight. The trumpet of God. What a season. What a time. Awesome. I love it. Our eyes are going to receive the reward of the wicked and of the righteous. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for your warning. We thank you for your counsel and your correction and your direction. Again, we ask for your mercies and grace to abound abundantly today as you prepare our hearts to commune with communion. In Jesus' name.